Okay, so we're continuing with John 3, and this is still the same meeting with Nicodemus. Really, you know, it's the same conversation, but we're going to have to break break it up, uh, especially since I went on that huge tangent last time. Um, and I wanted to talk more about regeneration and being born again, but I might save that for another message uh, and continue here. Um, and, you know, I just pray the Lord has mercy on me and gives me utterance. Uh and because all I have is kind of some impressions and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to put them into words. Um, but let me just read it here. So, so we know he just talked about being born of the spirit and Nicodemus says, how can these things be? And Jesus answered and said to him, are you a master or teacher in Israel and know not these things? Verily I say unto thee, we speak what we know and testify what we've seen and you receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? And no man ascends up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him would not per or should not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent his Son not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already, because he's not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light comes into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that does evil hates the light, neither comes to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that does truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be manifested, that they are wrought in God. And there's a couple famous verses in here, um, but there's a theme through here. That popped out at me because verse 13 he says you know first of all verse 11 uh after saying you know you're a teacher and you don't know these things we speak what we do know and testify what we've seen and you receive not our witness now who is we we is the father and the son it can't be anybody else uh you could say well it's john the baptist uh but, yeah, it could be John the Baptist, but I believe he's really speaking of uh, heavenly things. And he says, no man, verse 13, has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. So this is a unique witness, um, a unique testimony from heaven. He's testifying of heavenly things. And, yes, John the Baptist was... Of all men born of women, none was greater than him, but he that is born, uh, he that is the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than him. And the first and uh, at that time only citizen of the kingdom of heaven, I believe, was Jesus Christ, the Son of Man. And no one ascends to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. That reminds me of John 1 with Nathaniel. Remember he said, uh, what, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? Uh, you'll see greater things than this. You'll see heaven opened and angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. And we talked about how that is from Jacob's ladder, uh, which is Jacob's open vision of the heavens. Uh, and he called that place Bethel, uh, meaning the house of God and said, you know, God was in this place and I didn't know it. That's talking about the manifestation of heavenly things on earth. And Jesus is saying that he, he's really Jacob's ladder. He is the one on the, whom the angels ascend and descend. He is the one that joins heaven and earth. He's the one that manifests the presence of God. He's the tabernacle of God. He's the house of God, the cornerstone of the house. Okay? This is the same thing. 
no man is ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven. You see ascending and descending. Even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And I kind of made the point uh, that he emphasizes his humanity. Because, uh, remember, Nathaniel said, you are the Son of God. And so, again, Jesus redirects his attention to his humanity. Because it's in his humanity that he's going to accomplish his work. Um, it's his humanity that becomes the ladder. It's his humanity that's the tabernacle. It's his humanity that joins heaven and earth. Uh, okay, so this is the uh, reference to the same theme. Um, and then these last couple verses in this conversation, for everyone that does evil hates the light, neither comes to the light lest his deeds should be approved, reproved, but he that does truth comes to the light that his deeds may be manifest that they are wrought in God. Uh, it's interesting that evil is contrasted with truth, not good. It's You're either doing evil or you're doing truth in this. And truth means you're coming to the light. Your deeds are either you're shrinking in darkness because you love evil, or you are coming to the light because uh, you do the truth. And the truth is coming to the light. That your deeds may be exposed. I mean, he, you don't mind that that light is shining on you. Uh, this reminds me again. Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom there's no guile. Brings me back to the conversation with Nathaniel. Nathaniel came to Jesus uh, saying... You know, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Jesus commended his, what? Lack of craft, lack of dishonesty, lack of deceitful speaking, lack of flattery. That's what guile is. It's all those things. You maneuver by flattering, through deception, through cunning. You're trying to position yourself. And you do it because you want to be in a community. <laughs> and it's interesting because Nicodemus came to Jesus alone in the middle of the night. Why? Because of the community he's from. Now he is coming to the light and he's doing the truth. But I think Jesus is, uh, the theme here is contrasting relationships that are built on guile versus coming to Jesus and being in the light and doing the truth. And the relationships that are built on guile are evil. Uh, it's very interesting. And you may not believe me, <laughs> but um, everything that's being associated with men through these chapters is being pictured as in darkness and evil. And then everything that's associated with truth, not good, but truth or light or life is related to Jesus Christ. And it's an individual that comes to Jesus Christ. Um, you know, Nathaniel, he was brought to him by Andrew uh, and based kind of on the testimony of them, but he didn't really receive the testimony fully. He's like, can anything good come out of Nazareth? But he came to see. It was his own coming. Only, you know, people can tell you about Jesus, but only you can come to Jesus and be in the light. Some people come to Jesus, but they're still associated with their crowd. They're still, they're still trying to maintain a position in a community, in that darkness, uh, by guile, through flattery, through, you know, a little bit of truth, but a little bit of, I'll go along with what you're saying too. And, and I won't call you out if you're not being, you know, truthful. 
Uh, the only way to come out of that is to come alone to Jesus. You know, you really have to, it, it, it really, you do have to be one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. There is an alone aspect. All the stones come to Christ alone, and then he builds them together. But we try to build horizontally, what, horizontally rather than vertically. Even in Ephesians, it talks about how it's that Christ may make his home in your heart, right? That you be rooted and grounded in love, that you may be able to apprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth of the love of Christ which passes knowledge. We think it's being loving to each other that God wants. That it's the really the big focus is this love fest. And yet, to someone who has no guile, it feels false. Ah. To Jesus, it feels false. Um, to me, it feels false. <laughs> I've never been able to stay in a community like that. I, I do feel that it's not good versus evil. It's evil versus truth. And coming to the truth, you have to come alone to Jesus and let him shine on you, you know, and he exposes the whole thing. Um, yeah, that's my impressions. But that's why I was like, I don't even know if I can put that into words. I'm just trying to be honest to what I see in the word while I'm going through different things and what I witness, you know, Jesus wants to tell us of heavenly things. He is the ladder that joins heaven and earth. Uh, he is the one that the house of God is built on, not something else. If you deal strictly with men, you'll only deal with earthly things. If you just deal with a community, you will never grow. You're, he won't, you will be in the darkness. Remember, he's writing to the church. And the church is often, uh, it becomes a group think where we just sort of congeal together out of human niceness. And when that, when those relationships become really concrete to where you've got all these loyalties to men and your position in that community, then you're no longer coming to Jesus alone and letting him shine on you. Like, you have to get out of that community in a way. Uh, Jesus deals with individuals. When it comes to light, when it comes to him shining on you, you've got to do the truth. And the truth is to come out of the darkness and come to him. And it's individual. That's what Nicodemus shows. And that's, and, and that's where the guile is dealt with if there's any actually it's as you come forward in that way really honestly to the lord apart from anybody's opinion of you apart from trying to fit in with a group that you sh really shed the evil and are doing the truth and coming forward so he can shine on you does that make sense so actually i'm going to have to break this into another message because this is all i want to say right now about this um the, the theme again and again and again in John that I keep seeing is, you know, seeing the leaves rustle, but not being able to detect the wind, uh, seeing the manifestations, but not being able to grasp the essence. And it's because people are in darkness and that darkness is not just individually their own sinfulness. It is that, but it's also being of the world, being in relationships that are solidified and cemented together by guile, which, which involves flattery, which involves false love, which involves human flesh, and you stroke me the right way and I'll stroke you the right way and I'll be loyal to you once we're in this relationship and I will value this relationship more than I value the truth. 
And, and I see communities forming that way. I want to run. Um, I, you know, I shut down. I will not stroke you the way you want. I can't. And be a person who wants the Lord and wants the truth. I think our concept of human love, our human concept of love needs to be ter- overturned. We have a love that's Christless. We have relationships in a way that are Christless. They're built on flattery. You know, it's each person telling the other people in their community how wonderful they are. With And yet there's very little nourishment and very little truth. Um, we need to be those who are without guile, coming to the Son of Man and letting Him reveal things from heaven to us. Only the Son of Man, who's been, who's in heaven, can declare the things from heaven. And you have to get alone with Him. Paul, you know, when he got his revelation of Christ in him, he didn't go to Jerusalem deliberately to learn from those who'd known Jesus according to the flesh or even according to the Spirit. He went to Arabia by himself, and and we believe he spent three years. Some believe he went to Sinai, and that was where he had his vision where he was taken up to heaven, um, just like Moses, you know, had been taken up to see a heavenly vision. We don't know. Uh, But the point is, Paul... To become a minister, uh, a steward of the mysteries of God, had to become uh, a person who was alone with Jesus and val- and who did the truth and valued truth more than his position as a Pharisee or his position in religion, his position of being respected by people, um, his position of being loved and loving in return without Christ. We, we've got to be willing to be alone with Jesus uh, if we're going to be used to speak truth or to not be natural but to be spiritual in our view and to have revelation. That's a one-on-one thing with Christ. And it's only one-on-one where you're really open up to him and letting him shine on you that you can be freed from guile. You know, I've never heard anybody connect these two things, but I just see that theme running through this whole thing that uh, of individually coming to Jesus and letting him shine on you and give you real revelation so that you're not just handling earthly things, leaves moving in the trees, but you're actually letting the wind blow on you. And then it'll move, that wind will move you in a way that nobody can understand. Because he said those who are born in the spirit of that way, you know. we The church is a fellowship, but it's a fellowship. It's the fellowship with the Father and the Son. No one receives our witness, right? Uh, our witness is the Father and the Son, and that's what what John said in uh, 1 John, you know, we write these things to you that you may have fellowship with us and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. It's not a fellowship that's horizontal first. That you come into relationships with the Christians and then by osmosis you'll come to know Christ. No, you come to Christ individually and He shines on you and then He builds you up with others in the truth. And, I ha- and, and, and these relationships look a little different than what we tend to see in, in what eventually amounts to a spiritual, cult, a spiritual social club, you know. Oh, um, okay, well, I better listen to this back. This is offensive, I know, but um, that's just what I was seeing. I was like, how am I going to put that into words? Let's see if it made sense. Okay, so I want to append this message. I did listen to it back. Uh, the only thing I'll say is a little balance. You know, um, it's not that we can't have friends and natural um, uh, relationships and also be warmly affectionate to each other. You know, but when it be, you know, why evil? You know, what? Uh, 
the, when it's to, what, what I see, what I experience is that these relationships can become an obstacle to the truth so that you can no longer speak truth in that situation for fear of upsetting the relationships. It's when, whenever your loyalty comes down to the relationship rather than to the word of truth, you're not building. And this is, a, this is again, about building. You know, when it comes to Bethel, you're talking about building. What builds the church and what are the enemies to building? And one of the, again, the biggest enemy is guile that's manifested in so many different ways. Um, just lack of truthfulness um, because you're compromised due to caring for the natural man and his feelings. Like Jesus said, you know, get behind me, Satan. You, you consider the things of men and not the things of God. Um, he confronted that continually. You know, I... In Matthew 11, he said, What shall I compare this generation? Uh, you're like children in the marketplace who said, We played our flute for you and you didn't dance, and we played a lament for you and you didn't cry. In other words, I'm not going to be able to, Jesus is saying, I'm not going to give you what you want. I'm not going to respond based on manipulation. Uh, I'm not going to respond to you uh and dance the dance you're wanting me to dance. I have to do the will of my Father. Um, I have to speak what He gives me to speak and respond in truth uh, to things and respond truthfully and spiritually um, and consider the things of God and not the things of man. Hope that makes sense. I think it makes sense, it's just offensive.